Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching. A focus on the landing flare. There were several cases of aircraft touching down with their nose landing gear first or hard landings, reported to Airbus over the last two years. This article will present some key points coming from the analysis of two of these incidents and recall the operational recommendations for performing the flare phase that are key to ensuring a safe landing. Case Study 1 Bounced Landing, Nose Landing Gear Impact, and a Tail Strike on Go Around. Event Description and a 320 was on the final approach segment of its ILS approach, configured for landing, configuration full. The pilot flying PF disconnected the autopilot at 370 feet radio altitude, RA, and kept auto thrust on. At 200 feet, tail in variations caused the airspeed to drop below approach speed. 1. From 100 feet radio altitude and below, high tail in gradients maintained the airspeed below approach speed, minus 5 knots despite auto thrust increase, and reached a minimum of 190 knots, approach speed minus 20 knots, at 5 feet radio altitude. 2. The PF performed the flare at 14 feet, and at the same time, started to slowly push the thrust levers above climb detent. 3. The aircraft touched down on its main landing gear and bounced. During the bounce, a pitch-pitch auto callout triggered. 4. The PF applied full nose-down order and retarded the thrust levers to idle. This triggered an extension of ground spoilers, leading the aircraft to heavily impact the runway. First with its nose landing gear, and then its main landing gear. Five, the impact of the nose gear resulted in another sudden increase of the aircraft's pitch, and the pitch-pitch auto callout triggered for a second time. The PF initiated a go-around by setting toga thrust and applying a full nose-up command. There was a tail strike as the aircraft lifted off from the runway at 133 knots. The nose landing gear wheels separated due to the impact of the nose landing gear on the runway, and one wheel was sucked into engine one, causing this engine to stall. Other system failures occurred due to the impact on the nose landing gear, and these caused the aircraft to revert to alternate law. The flight crew diverted to a different airport and eventually landed the aircraft. Operational Considerations Role of the Pilot Monitoring, PM The FCOM Standard Operations Procedures for Landing requests a speed callout by the PM in the case of speed deviation of 5 knots below the target speed. The PF should initiate a go-around unless they consider that a stabilized condition can be recovered by small corrections to the aircraft and with insufficient time prior to landing. The FCDM states that the risk of tail strike is increased due to the high angle of attack and high pitch attitude if the speed of the aircraft is allowed to decrease too far below approach speed before the flare. Looking at step 1 in the event described above, it shows the speed went below 5 app minus 5 knots from 100 feet and below. If the PM had made a speed call out, then the PF may have noticed the speed decay and attempted to correct it or initiate a go-around if it was not likely to stabilize in time. Flare Height The FCOM states that in a stabilized approach, the flare should be initiated at 30 feet for a 320 family aircraft. The values for other Airbus aircraft are provided later in this article. The FCDM recommends initiating the flare earlier if there is a tailwind. This is because a tailwind will contribute to a higher ground speed with an associated increase in vertical speed to maintain the approach slope. Initiating the flare earlier would have reduced the high vertical speed of the aircraft in the event described above. Thrust Lever Management the A320 FCDM explains that the flight crew can rapidly retard all thrust levers to idle, either earlier or later than the 20 feet retard auto callout reminder, depending on the conditions. However, the thrust levers should be at idle by touchdown to ensure that the ground spoilers will extend and keep the aircraft on the ground. In step two of the event, the PF pushed the thrust levers above the climb detent during flare. This increased thrust and inhibited the ground spoiler extension during the initial touchdown which contributed to the aircraft bounce? Bounce management. For a high bounce, as was the case in the incident described above, the FCTM recommends maintaining the aircraft's pitch attitude and performing a go-around. The hard impact of the nose landing gear with the runway described in Step 4 of the event was caused by the extension of the ground spoilers when the thrust levers were retarded to idle during the bounce, combined with a full forward stick input after the bounce. Go around close to the ground. 
The FCDM recommends avoiding an excessive rotation rate during a go-around close to the ground and to counteract any pitch-up effect due to the thrust increase. In step 5 of the event, it was the full back stick input combined with the nose landing gear bounce and thrust increase that contributed to the tail strike. Case Study 2 A 321 Nose Landing Gear Landing Event Description The A321 performed an ILS approach in night conditions. The weather was fine and there was a 10 knots headwind. The flight crew switched off the autopilot at 940 feet radio altitude and kept the FD on. The auto thrust was on and the speed was stabilized at approach speed. 1. From 110 feet radio altitude to 50 feet radio altitude. The PF applied several nose up inputs that increased the aircraft pitch attitude to 3.8 degrees nose up. The auto thrust commanded a thrust increase to maintain 5 app. The aircraft consequently flew over the runway threshold at around 40 feet radio altitude, with a vertical speed close to 0 feet per minute. 2. The PF applied several pitch-up inputs that maintained the nose-up pitch attitude, and the aircraft subsequently floated above the runway for 4 seconds. At around 20 feet radio altitude, the PF retarded the thrust levers progressively to idle. 3. 4 seconds later the aircraft was at around 10 feet, and the PF applied a full forward stick input. The nose landing gear heavily impacted the runway 660 meters after the runway threshold, followed by the main landing gear. Both nose landing gear wheels separated due to the severe impact, and the aircraft finally stopped on the runway centerline, resting on its nose landing gear axle. Operational Considerations Flare Height the FCOM recommends a flare maneuver at around 30 feet for an A320 family aircraft in a stabilized condition. The flare described in the case study 2 was initiated too early at 110 feet radio altitude and auto thrust was kept engaged. This led to the aircraft crossing the runway threshold with a vertical speed close to 0 feet per minute. Thrust Lever Management The auto thrust is active and targets the approach speed or selected speed as long as thrust levers are not retarded to idle detent. In this event, the aircraft descent rate was almost zero feet per minute at the runway threshold one. The auto thrust was still active. Thrust levers remained in climb detent and targeting the approach speed. This led the aircraft to float above the runway for several seconds until the PF retarded the thrust levers in step two. Pitch control. The FCDM states that the PF must avoid using nose down inputs once flare is initiated. The PF can release the back stick input slightly as required. In step three of this event, the aircraft pitch down effect due to the full forward stick input, combined with the aircraft's descent rate, resulted in a heavy impact of the nose landing gear with the runway surface. Go around decision. The FCDM states that if a normal touchdown point cannot be reached, a go around or rejected landing should be performed. In this event, the appropriate action would have been for the PF to initiate a go-around when the aircraft was in a float condition above the runway. Recipe for a safe landing The recommendations below summarize the procedures and techniques provided in the FCOM and FCTM. Be stabilized. A safe flare can only be achieved when the aircraft is stabilized, meaning that all of the flight parameters areas expected, including the aircraft is on its expected final flight path, lateral and vertical. Speed is close to approach speed and wings are level. If the aircraft reaches the flare height at the correct speed and it is on the expected flight path, then a normal flare technique will lead to a safe landing. PM must call out any flight parameter deviation. Careful monitoring of the flight parameters including speed, pitch, bank and vertical speed enables the PM to raise the attention of the PF to any deviation during the final approach. This will enable the PF to respond accordingly and initiate a go-around if required. Refer to the FCOM standard operating procedures for approach for more information about the PM callout related to the flight parameter deviation threshold. Flare at the right time. Flare should be initiated at around 30 feet radio altitude, a 220, a 300, a 310, a 320, and 40 feet, a 330, a 340, a 350, a 380. In stabilized conditions, Factors that may require an earlier initiation of the flare. 1. Steeper approach slope, more than the nominal 3 degrees. 2. 
increasing runway slope or rising terrain before the runway threshold. 3. Tailwind and 4. High airport elevation. Flare correctly. Airbus fly by wire aircraft. The PF should apply a progressive and gentle back stick order until touchdown. The PF must avoid forward stick inputs once flare is initiated. The PF can gradually release the back stick input if needed. The PF must perform a go around if a normal touchdown point cannot be reached. Any forward stick input after flare is initiated will increase the risk of landing on an LG with hard impact. Retard. A 320 aircraft. The 20 feet retard auto callout is a reminder, not an order. The PF can retard the thrust levers earlier or later depending on the conditions. The PF must ensure that the thrust levers are at idle in any case, by touchdown at the latest, to enable automatic extension of the ground spoilers. Delaying the retard of the thrust levers may increase the landing distance because the auto thrust will target approach speed or the selected speed until it is disconnected by moving the levers to the idle detent. Maintain the aircraft pitch in the case of a bounce. The FCDM recommends to maintain the pitch attitude in the case of a light bounce at landing. The aircraft will make a second lighter touchdown and the landing roll can continue. The FCDM recommends to maintain the pitch attitude and initiate a go-around in the case of a high bounce. Maintaining the pitch attitude and counteracting any pitch-up tendency due to the thrust increase enables the flight crew to avoid a tail strike and ensure a softer secondary touchdown should this occur. Be go-around minded. The PF must perform a go-around if any parameter deviation becomes excessive or if the aircraft is destabilized just prior to the flare. If the aircraft floats above the runway, the flight crew must initiate a go-around instead of attempting to recover the situation. The PF can abort the landing and go-around at any time until the thrust reversers are selected. However, when the reversers are selected, the landing must be continued. Avoid excessive rotation rate in a go-around close to the ground. When the flight crew initiates a go-around close to the ground, they must avoid an excessive rotation rate to limit the risk of tail strike. The flight crew must wait until the aircraft is safely established in the go-around before retracting the flaps by one step and the landing gear. The landing phase is very demanding, and it requires good coordination between the flight crew. The FCOM procedure and FCTM provide the recommended techniques that must be carefully followed to ensure a safe landing. The pilot flying must ensure that the aircraft is established on the expected final approach path at the approach speed. They will apply progressive back stick input at the correct height, which has been determined depending on external parameters. Any forward stick inputs must be avoided once flare is initiated. The thrust levers must be retarded to idle by touchdown at the latest for the ground spoilers to deploy. In the case of a bounce at touchdown, the PF must maintain the pitch attitude and decide to either continue the landing if the bounce was light or to go around if it is a high bounce. In the case of a high bounce, the PF must not attempt to land the aircraft by applying nose down input on the side stick. The PM also plays an essential role throughout the entire landing sequence. The PM is expected to call out any deviation of the flight parameter to the PF, which will ensure that the PF can react accordingly or initiate a go-around if the deviation cannot be corrected in a timely manner. Avoiding an excessive rotation rate of the aircraft for a go-around initiated close to the ground will prevent a tail strike. The PF must be prepared for a go-around and initiate a go-around in the case of late destabilization or if the aircraft floats above the runway. A go-around can be initiated at any time during flare or landing roll until thrust reversers are selected. However, when the reversers are selected, the landing must be continued. A320, Mentor Channel.